Hello and welcome to 150 Days of Psalms. This is a project uh, that I uh, entered into some time ago to reflect on each one of the psalms, one at a time, uh, for 150 days, starting at the beginning and moving to the end. My name is Derek Hoven and I'm the pastor at Salem Lutheran Church in Orlando, Florida. And uh, most days I uh, reflect on the psalms through my own experiences, uh, the stories of uh, my past, uh, and present, and uh, my hope is that you will find your stories in these psalms as well, so that God's Word can speak to you in new ways. We do read the, the whole of each psalm every day, and uh, today being day 55, uh, Psalm 55 is a little bit lengthy, uh, but uh, we read it now. Hear my prayer, O God. Do not hide yourself from my petition. Listen to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint. I am distraught. Because of the noise of the enemy and the oppression of the wicked, for they bring evil upon me and are set against me in fury. My heart quakes within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling have come over me and horror overwhelms me. I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee to a far off place and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would hurry to find shelter for myself from the stormy wind and tempest. Confuse them, Lord, confound their speech, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night the sentries make their rounds upon its walls, but the real trouble and misery are in the midst of the city. There is corruption within the city, its streets are never free of oppression and deceit. For had it been an adversary who taunted me, then I could have borne it. Or had it been an enemy who rose up against me, then I could have hidden from that danger. But it was you, one after my own heart, my companion, my own familiar friend, with whom I kept pleasant company and walked with the throng in the house of God. Let death come upon them suddenly. Let them go down alive into the grave, for wickedness is in their dwellings in their very midst. But I will call upon God, and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening, in the morning, and at new day, I will complain and lament, and God will hear my voice. The Lord will bring me safely back from the battle waged against me, for there are many who fight me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear me and bring them down, because they never change and do not fear God. This friend of mine laid hands on me and has broken our covenant. My friend's speech is smoother than butter, but war lurks within. My friend's words, as soothing as lotion, are in fact drawn swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord who will sustain you, who will never let the righteous stumble. But you, O God, will bring murderers and deceivers down to the lowest pit. They will not live out half their days, but I will put my trust in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist is dealing with a noisy time. Uh, that word is actually used because of the noise of the enemy. But it's not just noise. There is uh, the language of storm and tempest, of uh, violence and corruption in the city and strife. It sounds like uh, a really chaotic space that the psalmist is in. And the psalmist is really struggling. And those are the kind of times where it can be lonely where we're carrying these burdens of pain and suffering and trying to find a, a new way forward and the chaos around us has us overwhelmed. The psalmist says, my heart quakes within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling have come over me, right? This is a horrible space that the psalmist is in. And that would all be bad enough if you had a whole group of people around you that were supportive. Sometimes it's that support network that can hear our um, our pains and give us perspective or just uh, hear us out and let us sort through things on our own uh, to be that voice of uh, support and encouragement. But the psalmist has to turn around and say, no, it was you, one after my own heart, my companion, my own familiar friend. This is the person who has betrayed the psalmist. Later says that the person laid hands on them and broke our covenant with speech that was smoother than butter, but with lore, war lurking within. The psalmist was betrayed by someone close and that the language of covenant tells you that this was a real and deep relationship that was broken. And that indeed can be a lonely place. 
I have had those weeks of chaos, uh, and often those weeks of chaos have been uh, accompanied by death or uh, job transitions or economic struggles and all sorts of other uh, just things that happen in our human journey. And amidst all of that, I have had times where I've been surrounded by wonderful and supportive people who journeyed along with me and were uh, a great blessing during that struggle. But there is a time in particular that I remember that uh, this psalm really uh, resounds with, and the details aren't important. Uh, what is important is, is that it was someone of my own heart, and it was someone that I spent a, a lot of time with, as the psalmist talks about, uh, pleasant company. Uh, there was a, a covenantal kind of relationship there of um, shared experience and uh, a deep bond. And yet, the person did something that violated that covenant. Not as in the psalmist's case, having uh, physical hands laid on me, but it certainly was the the fine speech like butter with war beneath and the, the words of soothing lotion that were in fact drawn swords. And that place of betrayal and that place of struggle uh, was a very lonely space. Uh, the person that you thought would be a support turns out to be actually working against you. And that's a, a hard season uh, to live through. It was, in my particular case, uh, helpful that I had other people around me that were supportive and who didn't uh, break those covenants in those times. And I was able to journey along. The psalmist does not seem to have that, but the psalmist does have a trust in God. And I have little doubt that those other people present with me were God at work in those times. The psalmist says that God who is enthroned of old will hear me and bring them down. There's a sense that uh, lots of things change, but that God does not. And this God of old is one that is full of grace and who will bring life. And then there's this just fantastic part towards the end of the psalm. The whole thing has been kind of in this first person space of struggle. And then the psalmist turns it to that second person of saying, cast your burden upon the Lord who will, st who will sustain you and who will never let the righteous stumble. Even as the psalmist is personally being betrayed and let down and attacked, there's this, this move towards other people to say, no, cast your burden on the Lord because God's not going to let you down. It's this kind of humble and courageous movement away from personal pain and towards uh, care of another. And that's something that only God uh, can work in us. And it's that casting of our burdens on the Lord that allows us to live in that space. Let us pray. God of peace, noise is an ever-present part of our existence. We find ourselves amidst the literal noise of industrialization. We find ourselves trying to outpace the noise of busyness. We cannot escape the noise of advertising and commerce. We cannot escape the self-critical noise in our heads. We seek companions who will not add critical words. We seek peace, a sound of silence to calm our souls. Grant us your peace, O Lord, a peace which passes all understanding. Amen. Thank you for joining me for 150 days of Psalms. Tomorrow we will continue with Psalm number 56.